Today, I'm going to tell you about the Bernoulli process, which is conceptually like an infinite number of flips of a possibly biased coin. As always, let's start with a story. The herbalist would often venture out into the forest to collect mushrooms. Each trip gave an independent 20% chance of finding a useful bit of fungi. If the herbalist went out 10 times, what was the chance that at most three trips were successful? Whenever you have one or more random variables, you have what's called a stochastic process. One basic type of stochastic process is an independent, identically distributed sequence of random variables. For instance, consider B1, B2, etc., all Bernoulli distributed with parameter P, where the B sub i are independent. Now, B sub i having distribution Bernoulli with parameter P means that the probability that B sub i equals 1 equals P, and the probability B sub i equals 0 equals 1 minus P. This stochastic process is important enough that it gets its own name. We're going to say an IID B sub 1, B sub 2, et cetera, sequence of Bernoulli random variables with parameter P is called a Bernoulli process with parameter P. Now only consider the values of I where B sub I equals 1. These form a subset of the positive integers that can be thought of as a set of points lying within the positive integers. Call this set a Bernoulli point process. So a Bernoulli point process with parameter P is the subset of positive integers B such that B sub I equals 1, where B sub 1, B sub 2, etc. are IID Bernoulli with parameter P. Because B sub I can represent an experiment with two outcomes, often B sub I equals 1 is referred to as a success, while B sub i equals zero is referred to as a failure. Suppose that B1, B2, et cetera, starts off 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Then the Bernoulli point process B is those positions that have a 1 in them. The first position is 3, then 4, then 6, and so on. It is helpful to have a function that returns the smallest number in B, or that returns infinity if b is empty. This function is called the infimum, and it is often abbreviated inf. For b, a subset of the positive integers, the infimum of b is the smallest integer in b if b is not empty, or infinity if b is empty. More generally, the infimum of a set s is the greatest lower bound on all the elements of s, or negative infinity if there is no lower bound on s, or infinity if s is an empty set. There are several questions that can be asked about a Bernoulli point process. For instance, how many points are there that fall in the first n positions? In other words, how many successes were there in the first n trials? What is the sum of b1 plus b2 plus all the way up to bn? How many trials did we have to take until the first success? That is, what is the infimum of B? More generally, for R a positive integer, how many trials did it take until the rth success? What is the infimum of the integers n such that B1 plus B2 plus up through Bn equals R? Let's answer these questions one at a time. The number of successes in a Bernoulli process in a fixed number of trials is called a binomial random variable. Because the B sub i are either 0 or 1, to count how many are 1, simply add them together. For a Bernoulli process, B sub 1, B sub 2, etc., with parameter p, a binomial random variable with parameters n and p is b1 plus b2 plus up through bn. Write b1 plus up through bn has the distribution binomial abbreviated bin with parameters n and p. 
So that's nice as a definition, but how would one, for example, find the chance that out of five trials, there were three successes? Well, using the letter S for success and the letter F for failure, one could write the event where the first trial was a one, the second one was a one, the third was a zero, the fourth was a one, and the fifth was a zero, much more compactly as SSFSF. Now, because the B sub i are independent random variables, the probability of getting SSFSF is the product of the probability of getting an S times the probability of getting an S times the probability of getting an F times the probability of getting an S times the probability of getting an F. And because these probabilities of getting S are all P and the probability of getting an F are one minus P, this simplifies to P cubed times one minus P squared. Of course, that's not the only way to get three successes on five trials. You could have SSSFS or FSFSS or many others. Recall that the number of ways to arrange I letters S and N minus I letters F into a length N word is called the binomial coefficient, N choose I, and can be calculated using N choose I equals N factorial divided by I factorial divided by N minus I factorial. Recall that N factorial is the number of one-to-one -one functions from a domain of size N to a codomain of size N. To calculate its value, just use n factorial is the product as i goes from 1 to n of the numbers i. So it's the same as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1. For example, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 or 24. Also, 0 factorial equals 1. This gives rise to the following probabilities. If x is a binomial random variable with parameters n and p, the probability that x equals i will be n choose i times p to the i times 1 minus p to the n minus i times the indicator that i is an integer from 0 up to n. Now in the story, there were 10 trips into the forest each with a 20% chance of being successful. So if I let t be binomially distributed with parameters 10 and 0.2, that's a model for the number of successful trips. The goal is to find the probability that t is less than or equal to 3, which can be broken down as the probability t is at most 3 is the probability t equals 0, plus the probability t equals 1, plus the probability t equals 2, plus the probability t equals 3. We can calculate each of these things using the formula given previously, and summing those values gives a total probability of about 87.91%. There are other questions that we can ask about this binomial process. The number of trials needed until the first success, including that first success, is called a geometric random variable. For B1, B2, etc., IID Bernoulli with parameter P, we, if we look at the infimum of the I such that B sub I equals 1, that is the first time that we see a 1 in the sequence that is geometric with parameter P. For example, if the first few trials were a failure, a success, a failure, and a success, then the geometric is the infimum of 2 and 4 and some higher numbers, which is just 2. Actually, even knowing b sub 3 and b sub 4 was not necessary here. Once you see an i with b sub i equals 1 and everything before b sub i equaling 0, then g equals i is the first success. Now consider g geometrically distributed with parameter 0.2. What would be the probability that g equals 3? 
Well, in order for that to happen, the first two Bernoulli random variables have to be zero and the third has to be one. That is, g equals three as an event is equivalent to b sub one b equals b sub two equals zero and b sub three equals one. Using the independence of the b sub i gives that this probability is the probability b1 equals zero times the probability b2 equals zero times the probability b3 equals one or 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.2. In general, the following formula holds. For g, a geometric random variable with parameter p, the probability that g equals i is gonna be one minus p to the i minus one times p times the indicator that i is a positive integer. Now we can jump to a tougher problem. What's the distribution of the number of trials needed to attain the rth success? For a binomial distribution, the number of trials is fixed and the number of successes is random. Here, the number of successes is fixed and the number of trials is random. So this is called the negative binomial distribution. For B sub one, B sub two, et cetera, a Bernoulli process, for R a positive integer, if N is the first time that we see R successes in the first I trials, we say that has a negative binomial distribution with parameters R and P. Now the probabilities for a negative binomial random variable are calculated similarly to a binomial. In order for the ith trial to have r successes, we had to have had r minus one successes on the first i minus one trials. And so we lead with a coefficient of i minus one, choose r minus one. Then i of those trials, had to be successes, which happens with probability p, and i minus r of those trials were failures, which happens with probability 1 minus p to the i minus r. i itself has to be at least r before we see r successes, so it's a positive integer that is at least r. Now consider the following picture, where the points of the Bernoulli process are marked with a red x. If this draw of the Bernoulli process was being used to make binomial geometric and negative binomial variables, then the results would be as follows. In this Bernoulli process, the number of successes that occur in the first three trials is one. The number of successes in the first four trials is two. The number of successes in the first five trials is also two. The number of trials until the first success is two, the number of trials until the second success is four, and the number of trials until the third success is eight. So that's the story of the Bernoulli process. It gives rise to random variables such as Bernoulli, binomial, geometric, and negative binomial. See you next time.